Welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin, and this is a follow-up video to my Rolex, the future video. Link in the description. Check it out if you haven't seen it. But what's the future of the authorized dealer? Now, remember, the way we left it is a future in which men's Rolex watches are pretty much unobtainable. At best, at an authorized dealer, you'll be able to find a few ladies' models. That's about it. So, what's the future for the authorized dealers? Before we talk about that, let's talk about the dodo bird. Now, the dodo bird was a flightless bird. It's extinct now, but it lived on an island and it had no natural predators. Everything was peachy keen until men arrived and men brought cats with them, let cats loose on the island, and the cats found the dodo birds flightless as they were. Easy pickings cleaned them out and the dodo birds weren't able to, in that short period of time, evolve and adapt to that situation. Goodbye, dodo birds. What does that have to do with authorized dealers? Well, there are going to be some authorized dealers that go the way of the dodo bird, and it's going to be the authorized dealers that are unwilling or unable to adapt to the situation. It's the authorized dealers that we love because they're the honest ones, the ones that you go, you put your name on the list for something, and when it comes in, they go down their list and they make calls, and if that person doesn't want it, they go to the next person, and everything's fair. And these authorized dealers, from a customer standpoint, are great. But there's a lot of cost involved in running an authorized dealer. You have to pay for your employees, the advertising costs, all the costs that Rolex imposes on the authorized dealer, and the storefront. And these are not in cheap areas of town. And so they're not going to be able to just maintain that kind of system because they're not going to have the stock to do it. And when that sub comes in, to be fair about it and just to call the next person on the list, well, it's not really adapting to the situation. The ones that are going to survive and thrive are the ones that are going to take that sub, for example, and think about how they can increase their profit margin to stay above water using that sub. And that might mean, and this is happening now, we know, calling VIP customers that spend a lot of money at the store, maybe they buy jewelry or other watches, and making sure that that relationship continues, making sure that that person has the watches he needs and he wants, and that he's coming back and, and spending money at the store. Or pairing that sub with a two-tone Diamond Dow Ladies Datejust, that same guy buys it, he gives the Datejust to his wife, He's okay, he's got the money, it's just the cost of doing business, the cost of getting that sub, he's happy to do it. It's gonna cut out the regular guy that is coming in just wanting a sub. Now, I'm not sure how Rolex would feel about this, but it doesn't look to me like that authorized dealer is doing anything to jeopardize their Rolex distributorship. Now, the really adaptive authorized dealers in this retail Rolex ecosystem are gonna be the ones that do things below board, things that they probably would lose their distributorship if Rolex were to find out about it. And I'm talking selling pieces out the back door, bundling the hot pieces with the less desirable pieces and them going straight to the gray market. An authorized dealer like that from a customer standpoint, I mean, it's just really a front, okay, for the back room dealing. And I think it's naive to assume that this isn't already happening. And if court documents are anything to go by, links in the description to a couple pertinent videos that have a lot to do with this, then I think we could safely assume that somewhere in the world, this kind of practice is probably taking place. So that's the Rolex authorized dealer ecosystem. You adapt or you go the way of the dodo bird. And adaptation means a transition into what many customers would feel are at best unfair, but perhaps totally corrupt business practices. And this is where we are. It's only going to get worse and things are only going to get more ugly. And perhaps it will herald in a future where the middlemen, the authorized dealers, have gone so rogue 
and are so blatantly corrupt that Rolex has no choice but to step in and phase them out. Will they ever phase them out completely? I don't think so. And it would take years for it to happen, but I don't think Rolex can, uh, I don't think they can take responsibility for so many stores, so many employees. It's just too big of a task. And so really they are dependent at present on their dealers, on their middlemen, and their middlemen are using this to their advantage. And in many cases, I think it's just to survive. Let me know what you think. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time.